Are you ready for Christmas? Okay, that sounds like you're ready. <laughs> really? So when I said that, what was your first thought? Like, yeah, don't remind me. I have all this stuff to do. Well, what ideally should be our thought when you said, okay, are you ready for Christmas? Here comes Christmas. Great. Can't wait. And uh, so actually the temptation for us in our society is to speed up, is to try to get everything done before Christmas. If we get everything done on my checklist, then mom will be happy, dad will be happy, we'll all be happy. So just, just help us get ready for Christmas here. And while we can and should do certain things for Christmas, actually we really need to wait and to slow down. So slow down. Slow down this week. Don't try to speed up. Slow down. Be intentional about preparing for Christmas. You know, um, in, uh, in our world right now, in our hemisphere, there's a lack of light. I think December 21st is the shortest day, right, in our hemisphere, the, the day with the least amount of light. And, and so that can be tough for us because we, we need light. And so the church, in her wisdom, gives us this Sunday today called Gaudete Sunday, which means rejoice in Latin. And it's that marks the halfway point until Christ's birth at Christmas, although in our case, this year is just three weeks and a day. It's coming up quick. But in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of when the days are getting uh, shorter, but then they'll, they'll be longer after December 21st, right? A little bit light will be coming back each day. We light the rose-colored candle, some call it pink. Why? Because it's the color of the sky in the morning, the underbelly of the, of the, uh, the clowns there. You see that mixture of pink, of rose, and, and, uh, and purple there. Jesus rose on the third day. New life on the third day. So it reminded me, this, this picture of a picture that I took, which doesn't look as good, but it gets a point across, in Alaska. Remember, my first assignment as a priest was Fairbanks, Alaska, as a chaplain to, to college students there with uh, a Marian who was there. And so one morning, I noticed the sky was intense. So I took this picture of the sky over uh, in, in uh, Fairbanks there at the university. I also took this picture uh, later on um, around this time. Because what time of day do you think that is? Um, actually, in Alaska, that's about midday. It, it, was, it, was, it was about 1 p.m. The sun was just about to, to set at 1 p.m. In Fairbanks area, uh, it's like just after 10 a.m., the sun comes up and it just skirts the horizon. It just goes up like this and goes back down. It doesn't come up that, that far. And uh, Barrow, uh, the, the uh, town, most the northern part of uh, uh, Alaska where the, um, the pipeline uh, starts there, I was going to have to go there for two weeks to film for a priest. There, there's no sun for a couple months. The sun doesn't come up. So thankfully, it wasn't called to go there. But, uh, but still, people are affected by the, by the lack of light. So when, you, when the sun would come up, make sure you take a walk, get some light. Even though when you took a walk there, it was like this temperature. That's a picture of me there when it's minus 42. A little cold. It's so cold that you can do, even do an ice sculpture of a polar bear and it stays there for like three or four months. That's how cold it gets there. Anyway, I hope that warmed you up a little bit. Okay. But what also happened there in, uh, in Alaska was for three weeks, I spent the time in the bush, uh, a place called Caltag on the Yukon River. So you know you can get there by bush pilot uh, and a plane there. And... So I filled in for a priest. I was there for Christmas, my first Christmas as a priest. And uh, I found out that there was another village up the Yukon River, about 30 miles away, called Nulato. And they weren't going to have mass on Christmas Day because there was no priest there. Only a village, about 300 uh, Athabascan Native Americans. They're not Eskimo, but close to Eskimos. And no mass on Christmas, no priest. So I'm like, I'll go up there. 
and uh, I had to take a snowmobile, I had to follow somebody, never been on a snowmobile in my life, it's not exactly motor transportation in Philadelphia, and uh, so I hopped on a snowmobile, followed somebody, on 30 miles on the frozen Yukon River, the only way, that's their highway in the wintertime, the only way you can get from village to village is by a frozen river, and they stake it out. They put stakes in there when it gets frozen, so you can have reflectors there, so you can see where the path is, so you don't hit into a frozen ice going 50 miles an hour. So that's how you get from village to village. I got there, and I did the mass. I also did a baptism. Here's a picture of the family in the church. This is the church, right? So a different kind of church there. So, but it was, it was a good experience, intense experience for me, my first Christmas as a priest and baptizing a child, right? And that's how God came to us as a child 2,000 years ago. And this child was anointed, baptized in Christ. So I was able to bring Christ to this community and to this family. And they brought Christ to me uh, through their love. The question is for us for this Christmas, how are we going to bring Christ to our family, to our friends, to our neighbors, to our community? How are we going to bring the light of Christ? Because there's a lot of darkness, right? A lot of darkness in our world, a lot of darkness in, in families. Even we all have our struggles, our sins. How can we bring light and give hope to someone else? Well, we have an answer in St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist is the, uh, the voice crying out, preparing the way, the highway for, for God. And so let's do a little biblical theology here. Okay, so, so put on your, your Bible hats here. Here we go. Um, they were awaiting the people of God for thousands of years, for hundreds of years through the prophets. They're awaiting a Messiah, the Christ, the Redeemer, who would save them, save them from their oppressors. Messiah. What's the Hebrew word for anointed one? It's at the top. Mashiach. Well, what's that sound like? Messiah. Mashiach is the word for anointed one, to be anointed. So Messiah in English is from that Hebrew word, the anointed one. Greek, that was the main language being spoken. That was like the English of the day because that was the world power right before Christ. So, they all, so many spoke Greek. Anointed meant, the translation for that was Christos, anointed. That's where we get Christ. That's why Jesus is called Christ, the Christ. It's a title, not a, a name, not his last name. Jesus, the Christ. So it means anointed one. So that's why when you hear in the gospel today, when they're saying, are you the Christ? Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Well, why are they saying that? It's because in Malachi, the last uh, prophet in the Old Testament, the written prophet who's, who's writing, says, now I am sending to you Elijah, the prophet, before the day of the Lord comes. So they're expecting Elijah to come before the Messiah, before the Christ. That's why even today, if you talk to any good practicing Jewish person, uh, they have um, parts of their, their liturgy uh, set aside well, for Elijah. They have Elijah, a seat for Elijah, or the doors open for Elijah because he's supposed to be before the Messiah. But John says no. In humility, he says no. But actually, Jesus says later on, yes, he's Elijah. Not reincarnation, right? But uh, in the spirit of Elijah. Well, they say, well, are you the prophet? Well, what do I mean by that? Well, if we go to Moses, Deuteronomy 18, he says, he says a prophet like me, Will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kindred? So they're expecting the prophet, the new Moses, and that's Jesus, who's a new Moses. So John says, no, I'm not the prophet that you're thinking of. Well, how about then, are you the Christ? And so I just explained they're anointed. Isaiah 61 from today's reading. 
The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me from Daniel 9, the coming of an anointed one. This is the Christ. And John says, no, I'm not the Christ. Well, who are you? I am the voice that cries out. He is the herald. The voice that cries out, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. The question that I have for all of us today is, just like the Pharisees, many of the Pharisees and scribes, the, the, the most learned of the scriptures and their religious rites of the day, most of them did not get it. They weren't able to recognize John the Baptist, who weren't able to recognize Jesus as the Christ. So the question is, in our world today, are we going to recognize the Christ, or are we going to recognize Jesus when he comes to us through different people and through different situations? Are we going to be able to bring him to this world, to a family member who's lonely, or a, a neighbor is going through a tough time, especially at Christmas time, are able to, to get on that path. It's going to be easier than the Yukon River, but can we, can we get in our car and visit that person? Can we walk to that person? The path may just be easy one from across the street or in the neighborhood or through a telephone or through a, a text or through a phone call, through a visit. So this next week, I encourage all of us not to speed up, but to slow down and to wait. Remember, we said it's worth the wait this Christmas time. Not just the day, but the season. Who did the best job of waiting for the Lord, preparing the way of the Lord? Not John the Baptist. He did a great job. Our Lady Mary. This past uh, Tuesday, we celebrated Our Lady Guadalupe, uh, a special occasion, especially for our Mexican brothers and sisters, but not just our Mexican brothers and sisters, but for all the Americas, North and South, as Pope John Paul II said, she is our patroness. But I also found this image, modern-day image of Mary, waiting upon the Lord, in, in the dark, in the night, waiting upon the Lord, waiting for the Lord to be born, waiting for her Lord to be born, the light. May Mary help us to bring the light of Christ to those around us this Christmas. Ole Guadalupe, pray for us.